FX2000 Mircom and this panel is addressable panel like the other panel we have to start with battery test we put the meter on voltage DC and measure the voltage when the AC is on if you look at the paperwork we have preloading battery voltage with main power supply on so it means it's float voltage when the AC power is on in this case battery is not doing anything battery is just a standby and we have to write it down here so we have float and we have pulse so if the voltage moves from one point to the other point we have to write down highest one and lowest one and it's pulse and if the voltage doesn't change it means it's float and we have to write it down here on the paperwork second is uh, to make sure battery capacity is okay so we have to take the batteries disconnect the batteries which we have to disconnect it's better that's a good habit to disconnect the positive first and then negative and then if the panel is connected uh, to the security the security goes off which we have to enter the code and then you have a trouble here it means the battery is supervised so panel take, uh, taking care of the battery if somebody touch the battery disconnect the battery it goes to trouble and we can silence the panel and then we put the battery uh, for capacity test we measure the battery capacity here so there's two lead positive and negative we connect positive and negative to the battery and then push the test and we'll see the percentage of the capacity of the battery which uh, acceptable is uh, minimum acceptable is 80 percent and we have to wait so this is maximum which is 100 and we have to do it three times because in this case we have to put the battery on the load and see what happens to the battery when we put it on the load sometimes first time is 100 and the third time is 60 percent so this one is good second is 100 and third time and we have to do it with both battery for the both battery and if it's more than 80 percent we are okay okay the second part of the battery test is uh, uh, testing the battery with ACs off we call this condition supervisory so when we lose the power for the file on panel uh, we should have actually 24 hours uh, coverage for supervisory from the battery so we need we get the voltage and current uh, from the battery when the AC is off. We have to find out the circuit breakers. With circuit breakers, you always label, should be labeled and separated from the other circuit breakers. And we move the circuit breakers to the off. And then it's supervised by the panel. And when the panel is supervising, makes a buzz, we don't cancel the buzz. And then when the panel is buzzing, like normal condition, we have to take the voltage 2661 and the current. So because the panel is now on battery only, so now the current from the battery moves toward the panel and we have to measure this current flow with the ampere which for this one is 0.20 so when we got these two we can cancel the bus and write it down on the file on before which has two section for voltage and for the current we call battery voltage and current with AC off in supervisory condition. The third part of the battery test is battery voltage and current with AC off and panel in alarm condition. 
So we put panel in this condition and we go and test all the devices and bells. And then at the end we come back and then measure the voltage and current again when the panel is in full alarm. So if we have fire drill, push the fire drill. And then during the fire drill we measure the voltage and current. And after that we have to actually measure the maximum charging current which means we have to return the AC power back after AC power chargers actually comes to life and then start working and in this case charger will send the electro, uh, actually current to the battery so the actually direction is the reverse so we have to measure the current uh, for the charger which is very important. If we can't see any current here, or it's zero, it means the charger probably is not working. So this is the battery test, whole battery test for the fire alarm panel. And after that, uh, we can do uh, anything on the AC power. Okay, so this panel, when you open this panel, you will see uh, actually some wires here. So. The bell circuits for a Mircom panel called IND indication. So IND is the best information you can get from here. Is you can see IND here. So it means it's bell circuit. For this panel, we have two bell circuits, and the other bell circuits actually they have end of line resistor because they don't want to use it. And because this panel is adjustable, we have loop. So loop is instead of the detection circuit in a conventional panel, you will see instead of loop, detection circuits. But this panel has loop because it's addressable. And the other circuit is for monitoring. When you see the actually trouble and alarm and supervisory, it means all this uh, supervisory alarm and trouble are monitored by the actually monitoring company so if you look at the battery this is the battery and this is the uh, transformer why we have transformer transformer is here because we have to transfer the ac power to uh, dc so the ac power goes to a step down transformer so 100 if you see 120 volt becomes two actually 29 volt ac so 100 in the step down change to 21, 29 volt AC. And then through rectifier, this AC power 29 becomes DC because panel just using DC power for the circuits. So we need DC power and it's done by rectifier. And this is the actually basic things you should know about this panel. And uh, this is the fuse for actually power supply and uh, lots of you know uh, other devices which is not necessary to know in the this panel has a actually indication here and you will see alarm supervisory travel and monitor so any alarm comes to this panel it shows a flashing here and as an alarm you have to push it down if you wanted to silence the alarm, we have to push the signal silence. If you wanted to reset, we have to push the reset. So there, this is another function for this panel, uh, which is menu. So if you go, if you wanted to bypass the auxiliary, you have to go to menu and then go to the relay and push the relay. As we disconnect, you have to say yes, enter and auxiliary now is disconnected. So now we have two trouble. One trouble auxiliary relay disconnect and one AC power failure. Why we have to disconnect the auxiliary? Because some building, you don't know what you have as an auxiliary. Maybe it's uh, elevator homing, maybe it's fan, maybe uh, shutter door, maybe uh, some, some other things that, first you have to know about those things then uh, you have to come back and put the auxiliary to normal and test those devices. 
But for now, we put auxiliary off because we don't know what do we have as an auxiliary here. And another thing that you can uh, figure out about auxiliary, you can take a look at uh, actually a book that each building has a book. Uh, so you have to take a look on the book, which is fire safety plan book. So this book gives you best information about the buildings and what kind of devices and what kind of auxiliary you have. So if it's better before a starting test, just take a look at the, this book and see what you have in this building.